Hello everyone, it's John McCann from CarCraft Magazine, and we're here today at West Tech Performance Group in Mira Loma, California, testing AEM's Infinity fuel injection on our Blueprint Engines 540 Big Block Chevy. We ran the engines back to back in identical configurations, first with a carburetor and with the fuel injectors plugged into the manifold but not hooked up. And then we took the carburetor off, dropped on the throttle body, plugged in all the electronics and ran it again. It's a standard deck, big block Chevy, four and a half inch bore, four and a quarter inch stroke. It's a nice package, it's fully forged rotating assembly. So you got forged crank, rods, pistons. It's a hydraulic roller cam, 10 to one compression, so it'll run on pump gas, no problems. It'll give you years of operation without any issues. You can drive this thing anywhere, basically. So we first tested it in our November 2014 issue, and we tested it with a Dominator carburetor, and it made 700 horsepower, which was cool, because Blueprint Engines actually advertises this thing to make 670 horsepower. So it's always good when it makes more than what you expect. Switching to electronic fuel injection revolves much more than just removing the carburetor, dropping a throttle body in its place, and plugging in a few wires. Even though we think of a carburetor as being a simple device, it performs several critical functions within its compact housing to deliver the correct amount of fuel. To get our 540 running on electronic fuel injection, we used a 2000 CFM AccuFab throttle body, a set of 50 Motorsports Black Ops 115 pound per hour fuel injectors in a pair of Edelbrock fuel rails, AEM's fuel pressure regulator and sensor, and all were plugged into AEM's Infinity ECU with their universal V8 core and accessory wiring harness. Cool. So typically in my experience, you don't see really big increases in power switching from a carburetor to fuel injection, but you never really know because this does allow a very precise tune-up. So let's get this thing fired up and see what kind of power numbers we get. To duplicate the job a carburetor does, the computer needs input from several sensors to determine how much fuel to provide at any given engine speed and load. In addition, the computer relies on input from the oxygen sensors, which measure how completely fuel is being burned inside the engine. The computer tailors the amount of fuel delivered to the engine based on this data. Okay, so we're in the control room right now. The engine starts and runs, and it runs really good. And actually, the last pull we just did, it matched the horsepower peak from when it ran with a carburetor. All things being equal, the carburetor really should technically make a little bit more power because of vaporization and the cooling qualities in the intake manifold. But also what happens is when you compare throttle bodies with carburetors, you remove that booster out of the carburetor and you basically have more CFM with the uh, electronic fuel injection throttle body. So it's a give and take. I've seen it go both ways, but certainly from a drivability standpoint, the fuel injection, I have to admit, kind of has it hands down over a carburetor. And we've overlaid uh, similar torque and power from the carbureted setup that was done earlier. And uh, we're basically just fine tuning at this point seeing if we can eke out five or six here and there. So already we basically gotten what we wanted out of this test. There's a little bit left in the engine. They're doing some fine tuning with the air fuel ratio and the ignition timing and I think we'll get a little bit more power out of this combination yet. Honestly, we were surprised that the fuel injected version made as much power as the carburetor did. Typically carbs tend to win these comparisons. Things get interesting when comparing the power underneath the curve, where with fuel injection, the engine made more torque and power between 4,000 and 4,400 RPM. So it was a good day today here at West Tech, switching from carburetor to EFI on our Blueprint Engines 540. So the next step will be dropping this engine into a car and getting it tuned and going down the road. And you'll want to stay tuned for all of that coming up in CarCraft Magazine and online at carcraft.com.